is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 27th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it early, please. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading the upside. Percentage-wise, the leader is the uh, S&P, up one and uh, two-tenths percent. Right behind that would be, I'd say the NDX 100 is uh, just slightly ahead of that. That's up 155 points. The S&P 49. The Dow's up 347, a little over 1%. Russell's up a half a percent. That's eight points. The semi's up half a percent, 15 points. The upside. Gold's trading out at 1881. It's down 16 bucks. Silver's off eight cents. 23.45 is the pro. Well, oh yeah, I'm going to just change this here to the to the uh, July contract though. Uh, it's not going to it's not going to change the uh, results down nine pennies. Light sweet crude is off 77 cents, trade out at 100.94. Natural gas is up 22 pennies, 707 is print, and the 30-year Treasury down 22 ticks. That's trading out at 141.24. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you got booking holdings, 107 bucks or five percent. Chipotle, 50 bucks, three and a half percent. Tesla, 25 bucks, nearly three percent. Austin Technology, 21 bucks, 523 percent. Now that's a move. Uh, MasterCard is up 21 bucks or six percent. To the downside, Google, 60 bucks, two and a half percent. F5 Inc. off 25, 13 percent. Boeing's down 12. That's uh, seven and a half percent. Spotify's off 11, nah, nearly 10 percent to the downside. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. But to begin today's trading session, not the trading session, but begin today's trading hour, we're going to go take a look at the play-by-play, uh, -play, the short-term time frame charts out here. We'll just simply start with those 30-minute charts. 30-minute chart, the upper left, uh, I think I got the wrong one out there. Mm, yep, I did. So give me a moment here. We'll get the correct chart up on the screen. I'll be talking about one thing, and you'll be like, what the heck is that guy saying? So we're not going to do that. Here's what that guy is saying now. You've got the 30-minute, so the other 30-minute time frame charts out here. Number one, you'll see the ES Mini formed a uh, TD9 count bottom it, and a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It did that at the, uh, well, really did it at the open last night. Uh, far, bar number eight formed at the close. And then when the market reopened at six o'clock, you had that uh, gap to the upside, um, bull separating candle, bar number nine of a TD9 count, which led overnight um, to a move higher. And uh, then price pulled back to test its breakout level. And that breakout level was at 4163.75. And I mean, it tested right to the T at 4 a.m. And then there was, I'm not sure what news or what took place, uh, but then there was a big move to the upside. Now, and then we saw price pull back and test that breakout level again. So my question to you would be this. How important do you think 4163.75 is for your interpretation of what the ES Mini is going to do? I'd have to say mucho grande. 
Yeah. So if you see it close below that, not that the bar number eight and that Roseman indicator bottom can't hold, but when you get close below 4163.75, it's probably lights out. To the upside, now this is the cool thing about the uh, patterns here. Right now, all we've got really is a consolidation between two levels. The breakout level, and this is we're talking about the ES Mini, which is at 4163.75, and the breakdown level, which is at 4229.75, which was hit as we came out, well, as we as we were coming onto the air out there. So you can see that th these are the two key numbers to pay attention to. If you see now, of course, you know that we've got a rule here, you gotta be two consecutive closes above resistance, two consecutive closes below support for it to have some real meaning but odds would favor a move above 42.29.75 will take us up into the 42.86 type level that's the next td9 count breakdown area now it really is the es mini that is the instrument that we should be focused on and paying attention to and the reason is because you and i can see that the key level objective level that is of support and objective level of resistance simply established by that td9 count pattern out here that these areas have been explored and they have held so and we don't have that same situation in the NQ or the YM, the Russell 2000, or, or the YM, the Dow, or the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000 out here, what do we have? So this recently formed about uh, uh, about 10.30 or so. Let me see. That was at uh, 11 o'clock, formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. If it can clear... And I mean take out, I mean close above 1904.50, then that's going to signal some upside move for it. The Dow needs to take out 33.620 to suggest that maybe there's something more to this rally. Now, that something more may only take price up to the 33.902 level out there. But right now, what price is struggling inside the Dow, again, on the 30 minute time frame chart, is the top of its profile, which is at 33.560. The case of the NQ with regard to a 30 minute time frame, other than forming that roads momentum indicator bottom signal last night at the open, I don't really have much for you here. So the focus really today should be on the ES mini and it should be at the price level 42.29.75. And uh, that's at the resistance level and 41.63.75 as your support area. So since we're done with that, what do you say we all throw on our bathing suits and head on over to the beach? Beers are on me. Now, wouldn't that be a fun thing to do? It will be a fun thing to do. We just have to wait till 2 o'clock for that. We're not going to do that at 1.13 in the afternoon. Okay, so what do we go take a look at next? Great question. And uh, there, there's a question here from Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill writes in, he says, uh, where must today's penetrating candle close to be a reversal in the A to B equals CD down for the uh, Dow? And that is a great question. And Mr. Bill, I'm struggling to answer that question. The reason I'm struggling to answer that question is I'm not sure which set of my data is correct. And what I mean by that, and I'll show you, and I, I tried to tried to resolve that during the uh, break between the uh, one o'clock update and the uh, show, and I just simply was unable to do that. And here, we take a look at the NQ. I'll just simply expand out the charts. We're all looking at the exact same thing. Granted, I've got my synthetic contract, but it, it didn't change matters when I switched to the June contract. And here, the TD9 count breakout level is at 12,942.50. And on this chart here, this shows that coming into the close, that level held. So that says it still has a bottom out there. But basically, the answer to your question, really to give you a real, you'd have to get a nice bullish engulfing candle. Mr. Bill, and that would at least require a close above 12,881. Can't be. Is that right? No, we're trading at 13,000. Uh, I'll, I'll figure that out during this break here, Mr. Bill. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the answer to Mr. Bill's question for the NQ is if we got a close today above uh, 13, 583.75, that would give us a bullish reversal candle that would confirm the A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, the price yesterday got down to a low of uh, 12, 8 to 1. We're looking at the NQ daily time frame and uh, 12, 12, 8 to 150. And uh, the one to one. Price projection was twelve seven fifty eight seventy five. That is close enough for me, in uh, in the homework that I do out there, uh, to say that that would then be a completed by the D point. But that, folks, is only if we get a bullish reversal uh, candle out here, and that is not what we have at the uh, moment. We've got A to B equals CD patterns, by the way, inside the ES mini and inside the uh, Russell two thousand. So. Each of those are waiting for, one of the patterns, they're waiting for bullish reversal candles to confirm the uh, buy the D point. If it doesn't do it here, and, and each of them have attained or come close to attaining the one-to-one -one level, the, the, uh, the ES Mini's actually attained the 1.272 area of its, uh, uh, of its C to D leg out there. But uh, again, it's just waiting. So until a bullish reversal candle forms, price may go target the next price projection area, which in the case of the ES Mini, as an example, that could take us down to 40.63. In the case of the NQ, that could take us to 12.340. No A to B equals CD pattern inside of the Dow. Really, what we have inside of the Dow is a little wedgy pattern here, price trade between trend line resistance and trend line support. 
Price did yesterday test, as it did today, test and reject the top of its February 24th swing point. So the Dow appears to be relatively strong. Uh, in the case of the Russell 2000's next downside target, assuming that a bullish reversal candle does not form, would be 1844. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame charts here for the equity futures contracts. We had a question coming in from Peter in Park City. And Peter says, Steve, can you look at Euro futures? Looks like it has bottom. Let's go take a look. Let's look at the Euro futures. Let's use our eight panel uh, screen out here. So that way we've got a multi view. and We're not just looking at one view to establish whether there's a bottom or not. So we take a look at this. We'll just simply go step by step. We'll start with the larger time frame, Peter, and we'll start with the monthly chart. Now, in the monthly chart, as soon as this opens and expands, come on, there we go. So on the monthly time frame chart, this month, the month of April, is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. At the same time, price right now is trading below its breakout level of 1.0766. Next price target, 1.0494. This suggests, Peter, that on a monthly basis, that we should see some type of TD9 count bottom form between April and May. Well, geez, Steve-O, thanks for that. Between April and May, that's pretty wide. So how do we figure that out? Well, we go to the weekly chart. We step down one time frame. Do we have some type of bottoming signal when we look at the weekly time frame? So as we expand this out, the answer we're going to see is no. We're, don't, we're not even close to seeing some kind of a bottoming signal here, at least not as of 121 in the afternoon. Why? But there's just no pattern out here. We can look at an A to B equals CD. You need a bullish reversal candle in order to confirm that pattern. You're in bar number four on a weekly basis. You've taken out a prior low. These are lows from 2020, from back in March of 2020. So the weekly time frame is telling us that April, because we only have a few days left in the month out here, that April is not going to be the bottom from a TD9 count standpoint. Because if it were, Peter, we would see some type of bottom signal here. Now, the week is not out. It's only Wednesday. So that could occur by Friday. But unless we get that, and that would be some type of bullish reversal candle, and because it's a weekly bar, that would require one heck of a move higher. It could unfold. But right now, it doesn't look very good. So the weekly is saying, yeah, not so much. That bottom, if it's going to occur on a TD9 count, is likely going to be sometime in May. So we take a look at the daily time frame. And on a daily time frame, Peter, as we look at look for bottom signals, there's nothing. There's nothing that Stevie has. That doesn't mean that it can't bottom. Remember, I'm using a handful of patterns that help us to, that when they are present, they help us to identify a top or bottom. That does not mean that these patterns are present at every top or bottom. But with regard to the tools that I use, in your specific question, has the euro bottomed? I don't have a signal to suggest that whatsoever. Bar number three on a daily time frame, below prior swing points out here. Um, yeah, I've just got nothing on a daily, a weekly, or monthly time frame to suggest that the euro has bottomed. Now, if we're talking intraday, whole different scenario out here. And of course, intraday is where you're going to see the first changes in some type of change in trend. You're not necessarily going to see it on the daily or the weekly or the monthly. So if we take a look at the intraday time period charts out here, and we start with a 30 minute chart here for the euro, what do we know? Right now, I don't really have a I'm, I'm sure there's an A to B equal CD. I'm positive about it. As we just look at the chart. So there's a buy to D point, which has taken price right up to resistance. That's the top of its profile 1.05621. If price can close above this level, you could see a rise up to 1.06 six six that's a 30 minute chart if we look at the 60 minute chart out here brand new profile that is formed price is finding resistance at the top of that profile that level to watch is 1.05679 if price can close above that we'd be looking at a move to 1.0651 td9 count bottom on the 60 minute time frame chart out there if we take a look at the uh, 120 minute chart a to B equals C to the downside, price holding this oscillator and change line. So not giving you a signal of anything more than just a counter trend move up to that oscillator and change line. No bottom signal on the uh, 240. And uh, the five-hour time frame chart has bar number eight. It also would have a completed by the D point pattern, likely. I mean, it's a big, long A to B equals CD pattern out there. But price would need to close about 1.062 in order to generate some type of a... Um, uh, uh, some type of signal that price should move a bit higher. So basically, Peter, my take right now on the euro is, yes, we're seeing some short-term counter-trend type moves on the shorter-term time frame. But with regard to the daily, with regard to the weekly, and now when we put those together and take a look at the monthly, I don't think that we've got a bottom here inside of the euro. Could be wrong. 
and we just have to watch those short-term time frames play out to uh, see how that uh, unfolds. What we can also do, and we can see that the euro is really at a critical level. What do you mean it's at a critical level? Well, when I say critical level, we're going to change screens here, so you've got to give me just a moment to do that. These are the black background charts out here. And the critical level on a closing basis is 1.0515. We're trading right now 1.056. Now, it's a monthly chart that we're paying attention to, that we have on our screen right now. The month ends from a trading standpoint on Friday. If price closes below 1.05, that's not the swing point low. It's a closing low. And basically, Peter, what this would be signaling to us is if price closes below this area, its next level of support takes us all the way down to the lows of 2000, 2000, 2002, all the way in the 84 cent area. So um, and when that occurs, if it does occur. And it looks like it may occur out here. Of course, it needs to prove itself to us. So it's really at an area of support or potential support out here. But if it does break through this level, we should see the euro make a gigantic move to the downside. Now, I'm not saying necessarily overnight. I don't know what the time period is. But what I can tell you is there's nothing really left to stop it when we go take a look at the charts out here. And then if we get that, then the so-called um, we should see the bullish reversal candles for those A to B equals CD patterns inside the U.S. equity markets, and they will likely take off topside. So the euro, and thank you for asking the question, Peter, really key, really important to take a look at out here. But right now, I don't see the bottom signal. I only see a short-term outer trend rally. Hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ann. Be right back. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, close out the uh, euro here, the euro trade uh, that uh, Peter in Park City is taking a look at. So, Peter, you mentioned that you're using a two-hour time frame chart, which is what we have up on the screen. The two-hour time frame chart certainly has a buy the D point pattern that has been established. You have a new profile. So I wanted to share this with you. The new profile has got support at 1.0527. It has an bearish in structure. So your resistance zone is 1.062 to 1.065 out there. If price can overcome this red oscillator and change line, I know you use that. So I'm sure you have that on your chart out there. If price can close above that, odds would favor a move into that the resistance zone. Now, if price can clear the resistance zone, that's at 106.54. Then you would see a move up to 107. So that's what the 120-minute time frame chart uh, tells us. Dan from Boston wrote in into the Tiger's Den and asked this question here here first let me get to uh, one second here the question goes like this steve do you apply td9s and any and all time frames so i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a one minute chart up on the screen for dan and then go on and what if one two minute uh, counts fizzle but four or five ten minutes to uh, stay intact do you do you like to see them all cascade and confirm do you need to see that for your trading style so I don't know that I have all of the question, uh, so to speak. You might be asking me one thing, and I'm interpreting it slightly different here. But let me try to answer that question because there's different data that can come from a one- or two-minute chart that we can still use. And so you're saying if that, uh, if that fizzles. But we would have to really define what fizzle means. But here's a one-minute one chart for the ES Mini. When it topped on a one-minute time frame, this formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Okay, so right here, it generates that at 1245 this afternoon. It does that by generating a dark cloud, a dark cloud cover candle. Now, we have profile levels as well as the oscillator and change line to take a look at. But if I was going to say to you, what's the ultimate price target to the downside? You would have likely said, well, that's easy, Steve. Oh, it's on your chart. It's 4209. 4209 is the TD9 count breakout level. And where did price pull back to inside the ES Mini? 4209. Now, that is that breakout level is not a area, not a level that anyone with inside TFN, and that's a great group of individuals there Tom, Larry, David, Basil. It doesn't get any better than that. They would not have chosen 4209 as a breakout, nor would Stevie. And that's the beauty of that TD9 count pattern. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. And again, this is just the one minute time frame. Where's resistance? Where's the next resistance level? We know where sellers are at. They're at 4228.50. That's the breakdown level. We don't know whether price will hold that or not. Um, and so what I'll do for you tomorrow, because I, I, I don't have the time to do that today, but I'll set up a period of eight charts, one minute, two minute, you know, five minute, 10 minute, something like that. And then we can take a look at that. And I think I can better answer your question then. So hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for writing in. We've got a caller on the line. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call again. My pleasure, as always. And it's high-grade copper that I believe that you are calling about. Tell the folks what you're doing, how I can best help you out. Steve, you and I spoke uh, about copper right around the 1st of February, where I was seeing something and asking for your assistance. Uh, of course, that was before the war, and copper subsequently rallied nicely and topped uh, up near uh, 504 a pound. Yes. Uh, the pullback low, the selling that took place Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, brought price right back down to test the patented Basil Chapman 200-day exponential moving average support. Okay. It tested that and rejected that. Uh, I bought it last night uh, on Globex as Globex opened. So that's, uh, that's what it's done. That's where I stand. My question to you is, can you go through your chart work and your tools, please, and show us what levels any bounce and or rally likely finds resistance at and over what level copper needs to rally to prove out a bottom here yesterday. 
Okay, excellent question. Thanks for thanks for uh, describing that question so well. And to answer that question, what we're going to do is for some of the, we've got the daily time frame chart up on the uh, screen out here. And I'm using my synthetic version of the uh, chart, but that's okay. It's going to it's going to help us answer the question. So the very first thing that we know is that uh, copper is trading below the swing point of 449. And as long as it remains below that, we're 448 right now. We closed below that yesterday and the day before. So that uh, triggers a potential A to B equals CD to the downside. And I know that wasn't your question, but that would give us a price projection of about 431. To answer your question specifically, the price point is 4.5874, to be exact, right to the tick. And the reason that I say that is the price level that price would need to move above in order to suggest this is more than a counter trend move is because this was a bullish structured daily profile. Price closed below it on Monday, then again below it yesterday. We are still below it today. So we've got the two day rule that is in effect here. Typically, when a market closes below the bottom of a bullish structured profile, a counter trend move will find resistance at either the bottom, but more often than not at the center. And that'd be at 458. What I can share with you is without question, if price is able to close above 458, then that's telling us that price should make a run to the top of its profile, and that would be at the 488 level. So your question is pretty easy to answer because of that bullish structured profile and the price activity of the last two days, and, and even including today as a third day does that make sense does that answer your question oh you've got the hidden answer so yes indeed sir perfect now if i pull over my other white background chart and only have the daily weekly and the 30 minute chart of course you'll like this the 30 minute chart um bottomed with a uh, td9 count so kudos to you <laughs> and and oh, of then it did. yeah and, and and then when the globex opened and you got it you caught that TD9 count bottom pattern which led to an A to B equals CD to the upside that completed at about 5:30 this morning and then the uh, pullback has just been a, a natural pullback a natural retracement that hasn't taken out a prior low so right now things look pretty good your short term resistance level is 450 4.505 and that is the top of the 30 minute profile i don't have the i don't have this set up right now on the multi time frames only because I was worried that if I tried to get that uh, set of charts going, John, that uh, it could freeze up the system. And I didn't want to do that when I knew I could perhaps give you the answer that you were looking for with these black background charts. So um, so that that's what I've got. Is there anything else that I can provide to you? I think that pretty much answers it, Steve. I will uh, uh, be watching those with interest. Frankly, uh, if uh, if it goes down and busts under that 440, 442 level and gets to your 431, that yeah. would be even better. So we'll uh, we'll just take it one step at a time and see if we can uh, find a bottom that forms and get involved in a bigger way. So uh, thanks so much, Sounds sir. great. You bet, John. Always good to hear from you. That was John in uh, Philly. We've got some questions that have come in by email, so it makes sense that I should start to get to those. Well, at least start one. This first one coming in from uh, Zeffin. Zeffin writes saying, can we take a look at Flex? Steel, not the uh, not the uh, not flex seal, but flex steel. F L X S is the ticker symbol, and uh, let's change over to the screens, the white background screens out here, and we'll leave these up on the. Uh, We'll leave these up during the uh, break that we're going to go to. And uh, Zepp and I, I think, great great eye here for a, uh, a bottom. And the question is, he says, uh, I think this is a great long-term position candidate. And one of the reasons why he says that, look at the monthly time frame chart, TD9 count bottom. Look at the weekly time frame chart, TD9 count bottom. Look at the daily time frame chart, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. So... Zephin might be onto something, and we come back from this uh, break, we'll go investigate this further. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So I switched over to the uh, black background charts during that breakout there. And the reason is because the question that we just uh, uh, dealt with with regard to high-grade copper with John in Philly applies to the uh, weekly time frame chart here for Flex Steel. So, Zeppin, the price level that uh, you need FLXS to clear, close above, to suggest that the bottom signals that we just looked at prior to the break and the monthly, weekly, and daily – are going to have some significant meaning is a close above 2350. Close above 2350 on a weekly basis will take you above the center of its bullish structured profile, which price was below for four, five, six, seven weeks out there. So again, that becomes the counter trend move. Now, the patterns that we looked at with the monthly, the weekly, uh, TD9 counts, as well as the daily roads momentum indicator, I mean, that's very promising here. And of course, closing above 2350, especially if you could do it by Friday, would be uh, take you above the top of the monthly profile which is your which is another resistance area so that's that's really what you have to deal with there there's one there's a couple other areas of resistance for you and i'll change over to the white background screens this way you'll be able to see them you will know that i'm not just making this stuff up so a level of resistance because on the monthly time frame you had an oscillator and change line change colors and then form that td9 count bottom so 2665 is another level that price will need to clear to tell you that then price is getting ready to run to 4298. 2667 is the TD9 count breakdown resistance level on the weekly time frame. And, but the top of the profile is just above that. So that's at the 2714. So that's really the level there that price would need to close above. And on the daily time frame, a close above 2349 would be a real positive. That is a TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So flex deal looks really good out there. Now the question is, where do you enter? 
So the only real topping signals that we have for this came from a 65-minute chart and the 15. And the 15, TD9 count top pulls back to the breakout level of 21.57. Clearly, that was. We could easily see that now. was an entry area. You also had a TD9 count on the 65, and price pulls back and tests that green oscillator and change line. Currently, that's printed at 21.91. So to the extent that you want to go ahead and enter this, you know, wait for some type of pullback if you get that out there. Or you might chase it if we get a close above that 23.50 level. But great eyes for you. And uh, thanks so much for writing in. Much appreciated. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Hector. And Hector wants to take a look at uh, Facebook. So what I'm going to do here real quickly is change over to the black background screens, find a way to get over to a set of tools that uh, might be able to pull up some of these charts. We've got, looks like six or seven questions in the hopper here. So Stevie is behind, and I'm going to have to do a, a quick version. So Facebook, the question is, well, we still have Flex Deal up Facebook. Make sure I've got the right screen. There we go. Happy, wacky, wonderful Wednesday. Thank you. And same to you. Facebook, any sign of life for a strong bounce out here? Wow. Strong bounce. Uh, no. So that's easy to answer. <laughs> Why does Stevie say that? Well, I say that for a couple of specific reasons. One, uh, prices below prior swing points on the daily time frame. It's, it's, it's further to say to be equal CD to the downside. Looks to me like this wants to go target, at least target, the uh, March, is that, yeah, March of 2020. So the high of March of 20, by the way, March, it was the weekly time frame that began March 16th, 183 million shares. The high was 159.93. In fact, let's draw a line across that here so that uh, we can use this for future reference. So that looks like that is where price is going to go target, at least 159.93. You've got a rising trend line that probably on the monthly chart that probably takes us up into that level as well. Uh, from a daily perspective, I'm just looking at my white background charts out here. You're in, only in bar number six. So that's an, it's an easy question to answer for you, Hector and Patty. Thanks so much. Um, and I don't know if I'll have extra time to do Amazon, but I will. I'll try. Um, but uh, and I'll try to remember as well. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Mike in uh, Mike in uh, uh, in uh, Portugal. Uh, give me a moment here. Uh, Mike is asking about Apple, so I want to get that fired up on the white background screens out here. A, -A P L. And the question is: Apple completed an A to B equals C D, a one to one. By a smidge. What might this mean for the ES retracement? I'm sure you'll cover the ES today. Well, I did, but in the case of Apple, it did complete or at least target. It got down to the one to one target level, that 155.49. But what's missing from this is some type of bullish reversal candle. If you got a bullish reversal candle, then you'd have a bottom. And I would suggest that price would go target. Well, let's go find the oscillator and change line because that's where it would target. Doesn't mean it wouldn't take it out, but that would be the price target. 164.44, the oscillator and change line. You're in bar number four. Price might be targeting its breakout level of 154.46. But, Mike, what we don't have here, even though it's completed the one-to-one, -one, that doesn't mean that the A to B equals CD pattern has completed. And so my tools, the way that I do this, is I wait for the cavalry to arrive. I wait for the market to prove itself to us. In the case of Apple, that would require a bullish reversal candle, which is not present as of 147 in the afternoon. So I hope that helps you out. By the way, the next downside target for Apple would be 151.13. That's the 1.272 expansion. Eddie writes in, well, wow, Eddie writes in and says, what is the bull case for Apple if it reacts positive to earnings like Microsoft is doing? So, Anyway, we covered that, uh, that first you need the bullish reversal candle. Then you, price would go take on that oscillator and change line. Remember, that was in like the 165 level. If price can close above that, then you're looking for a move to the 170, 79 area. Um, any chance of NVIDIA avoiding the A to B equals CD to the downside? So since uh, we already had the Apple charts up on our screen, let's go ahead and put in the NVIDIA charts out there. And NVIDIA also has an A to B equals CD to the downside. It's a larger one that we're going to take a look at. And uh, can it avoid the A to B? Well, it can always avoid it. But right now, the B point of the A to B equals CD that I'm using is March the 8th. And that low was 206.50, and the volume there was 55 million shares. And that was surpassed with 65 million shares on April 21st. So what NVIDIA has is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside on the daily time frame with a price target of 149.49. 
that's the first price target. As we look at NVIDIA, it's below bottom of the weekly profile trend line. So the next area of support for it would be 177.78. That, at least at this stage of the game, is your last bastion of hope for NVIDIA, and that is the bottom of its uh, monthly profile. But you close below that, Eddie, and then I think uh, it's pretty evident with regard to what the intention of NVIDIA is out there, which is lower price. Jim C. writes in, and Jim says, oh, could you take a look at NVIDIA daily and weekly? You've got a target of 150. Well, so I think we've just answered that question. But again, that price target, the A to B equals CD, 149.49. So nice work on your A to B equals CD pattern out there. But remember that 177.78 area is uh, is a potential level of support. And that is, that's where the buyers are lined up from a weekly standpoint. But with regard to, since you also asked about NVIDIA, on a daily time frame, no bottom signal, bar number six. You could get a TD9 count next week. On a weekly time frame, no bottom signal there either. In fact, if anything, it says it wants lower price because price negated a TD9 count pattern, and it did that last week out there. So it does look like NVIDIA wants to continue to move lower. Of course, it can do anything that it wants, but right now, the technical patterns suggest moving lower, and I like your price target in the 150 level. David H. writes in. David says, are we getting close to a bottom in PayPal? PYPL is the ticker symbol, and I'll tell you what we'll do. When we come back for this break, We'll go answer that question for David in Tom Ball, Texas. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So as we take a look at that uh, PayPal out here, we can see prices trading below its daily, its weekly, its monthly profiles. It's just taken out a monthly uh, a trend line out there, so it's not looking good. But let's go look at the other technical patterns. Let's begin with the monthly time frame for PayPal. On a monthly basis, PayPal is also so top with a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. Price is now trading below its breakout level of 89.88. A close on Friday below 89.88, David suggests 39.02 may be the price target. The weekly chart has negated TD9 count bottom. It does have wave number seven that needs a higher low. So the earliest that could form would be next week. Um, and it has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So if you did get a bullish reversal candle plus a close above its profile, then that would at least give you a run up to 117 to 125. But uh, we don't have that at the moment. And on the daily time frame chart, uh, I don't have any kind of signal to suggest that you get into this. If anything, it's suggesting lower price. So that's what we see when we take a look at PayPal. It uh, looks like it wants to head lower. And I uh, hope that it helps you out, David. Thanks so much for writing in. The last question, we've got just a few seconds to do this, about a minute, was to take a look at FCX. This is for Rich in Oregon. Rich wants to take a long position in Freeport, McMoran. And Rich, I would say this. You've got a Rosemont indicator top. Price broke through one level of breakout support. 4676. You've got no bullish. You've got no bullish pattern just yet in Freeport McMoran. Now it's possible that what price is going to go do is tag its oscillator and change line, which changed colors a couple of days ago. So that's one possibility. To the extent that you wanted to take a long position, I would prefer that you do it at about 38.98. That's the next TD nine count breakout level uh, for Freeport McMoran. If I look at the weekly chart, see if there's any kind of signals out here. The weekly says price is pulled back and it's held at 41.25 level, so that's a positive. That's its breakout area. The uh, monthly time frame shows that price is pulled back in essence to support, which is the green oscillator and change line. So those two time frames look pretty good. Um, I don't see anything else. So I'm going to suggest this here, Rich, which is to be cautious. The other thing that I would do is I would go take a look at the Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar. If you see a bottom there, that adds to the idea of taking a long position in Freeport McMahon. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks.